Hey everyone, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle here watching the storms throughout the day and taking care of a lot of work behind the scenes. So storms are moving into Oklahoma City metro area and I'm starting to see those little QLCS type tornado signatures on radar for about the past five minutes. So I decided to go ahead and cover these because these are technically tornadoes. They are columns of violently rotating air. Typically they're very small, they're those EF0 tornadoes, but um, needless to say, we're going to be tracking those here for you as they come in Oklahoma City. So the line of storms is out here in the west, by the way, so it's moving on in. Now, the only area for concern for potential tornadoes is this band right here coming in right up the turnpike from Tuttle to Mustang northward. Uh, down here in Blanchard South where the gust front has pushed ahead of the squall line, so there's no threat there. And up here in northern Oklahoma, the gust front has pressed out ahead of the line as well. So that means the only threat of a tornadoes is right here over the Oklahoma City metro area. And these are going to be those small ones, but quick uh, acting ones. So let's just go ahead and stay on top of it in case a couple of those do get out of control. So I'm going to split the screen so we can uh, track these on the circulation size on both radar views. So let's go ahead and show you where the potential locations are. And keep in mind, these things will sometimes only last a few seconds or a scan or two, and then they're gone. So we did have one that looked like it was trying to get its act together on Fox Road and North uh, 2970 Sarah Road here out of uh, Bridge Creek uh, just a few minutes ago. And then that one kind of lived to the north and dissipated. But another one may form in its place. Up here in the northern uh, part of the line, a couple little indentation areas. Uh, this is going to be... Coming up on uh, South Morgan Road and one Southwest 104th Street, so just southwest of there, there's a couple little tiny circulation centers. Uh, so we'll see if those materialize to anything. But um, we're going to watch this probably just scan by scan and just track them for you. So if you live in Oklahoma City, uh, don't be surprised that we do get a official trade warning out of these. Uh, but keep in mind they will be very small, uh, very weak. Uh, EF0 tornadoes more than likely, at worst case, an EF1. Uh, take a look at the wind shear here real quick and the directional shear is, is mostly linear. So in this particular case we're looking at not supercell related tornadoes, we're looking at the little QLCS which are just spin ups on the leading edge. So it's not from a mesocyclone base, so in other words they can't get that strong because of that typically. So that's a limiting factor for these. So these are just from basically uh, little areas of vorticity that's out along the head of a front that just gets pulled up into a front updraft. Let's see. So we'll just sit here and watch these for you. So if you live in Newcastle, pretty much right up 44. Uh, this line will be approaching from the west here over the next few minutes and then we'll take it from there. I'll end up, I'll do a storm track for you here once this other uh, radar loads. Let's see here. The other good circulation is uh, south, like I said, uh, south of Mustang, a couple miles just basically due south of Sarah Road. And uh, we'll see what that one amounts to anything. The other one that's coming into the uh, Newcastle area from the west, it's residual from the Bridge Creek area, uh, and that has really diminished. But that's kind of coming over 76, State with Highway 6 and Northwest 21st Street, 24th Street uh, currently. So uh, there's another one coming into Newcastle that's coming on South Country Club Road in uh, State Highway 130. So, but again, that's very broad, very weak. The stronger ones is up here on the north side uh, in this area just southeast of Mustang. But star stronger meaning still very weak, um, which is good. Okay, so let's see. Let's load this up here in a second. All right. So there's no need to be in your shelters or anything right now. We're just kind of watching this as it passes through. Uh, if this line starts to gust out ahead of it, like the other ones did, then that'll completely eliminate the QLCS threat. But right now, at least for the time being on the short window, uh, the potential is there. And this is uh, now southeast of Mustang coming up Highway 52 and just east of Morgan Road is a little circulation center here. So this little, so back, think of an upward, upside down hook, basically, but it's this little spot right here. So that would be the potential uh, tornado. In other words, it would be a lowering there, but that's where one would spin up very quickly. And like I said, most of the time they last less than a minute. So it will be very hard to track. Uh, a lot of times when the weather service goes to see these and they try to trigger a tornado warning on them, 
it, the the trail's already gone. So in other words, it, that's how fast they are. So sometimes these don't get warnings because of that. Plus, they have to be very close to a radar to be able to see that fine resolution. And so this area now, just now is, and that's why you might get one here in Oklahoma City Metro, uh, just in case things get out of control. So again, here's this one, here's one northwest of Newcastle. So this is on the intersection of Country Club Road, just north of Northwest 24th Street, coming up on uh, Northwest 32nd Street. So that's this guy right here. So potential weak trail trying to develop there. That'll be moving up to the, what happens is these guys kind of move up to the north and then east. So the line will move east and these will kind of rotate north along the line. Uh, so when you're in the path of that, you just kind of have to be anywhere if you live. I'm going to give you the intersection. If you live north or northeast of the intersection, you want to be in your shelters or on the lookout for that. So, I mean, even in the reflectivity, there's a little bit of a hook look to this one. So that's kind of how that wraps up. Uh, and then up here in the Newcastle one, that one's pretty strong. So those are two. Uh, this southern one here, south of Newcastle, it's still too broad right now. Uh, so that one north of Newcastle is just filled in there for a second. In other words, it's not as strong as it was just one minute ago. So that's kind of how this is going to be. Uh, it's just, like I said, man, they're hard. So we'll end up having one, two, and possibly three tornadoes. And these will all kind of move in this fashion. Uh, this one actually just kind of go nowhere because it rotates back in to the north and west of the line. So this will pretty much just sit there and then eventually the whole thing will just kind of slowly move east with that part of the line. Uh, let's see. Let's try that again. Um, what else? Oh, okay. By the way, if you're, if you're watching from other areas of the state, we're not looking at a, a uh, tornado threat for you. I mean, flash flooding is your, your threat, and that continues up here in northern Oklahoma, um, all the way from Bartlesville, back into Guthrie. If you're watching from Rock, Oklahoma, um, it's quiet now, but this area is going to see the residual of these storms moving through. It won't be as bad as it was earlier, but it's going to be enough to make it a little muddy and wet down there. Uh, and then back here in southern Oklahoma, same kind of deal, just a lot of heavy rain and some flooding, but nothing uh, severe as far as that is concerned. The only severe thunderstorms with this, uh, well, section of the one up here in Osage County, is the one here in Oklahoma City. And that's for these uh, potential, you know, they put a tag on it, the weather service just means a possible tornado could happen any moment because it can be very difficult to um, get instantaneous. Let's see. Like that. Like I said, if you're not sitting here doing this, where you're watching them second by second, you can miss them. That's how fast they'll be. So let's see. Here's another one view of this one. Right up uh, 44, and coming up right on the County Line Road. Uh, let's see, right on the creek, Canadian River Stream. So that's a little weak circulation there. That's just due east of 37 and 44, and then the other one, we've got two. Two guys here, one and two, and this is southeast of Mustang. Back back, this come right over the airport, um, Will Rogers. So um, that's actually right over the airport. As a matter of fact, both of these are going over the airport. So Will Rogers got two possible QLCS tornadoes moving through that area. This is east of Mustang now. So I don't I don't think they're on the ground now. Um, but it's one of those deals where the next minute they could be. All right. Try to watch the remains in effect, by the way. Um, but we're not in a position to where we're going to be getting uh, the tornadoes that you're thinking of from the last couple of days. Those are all supercell based. These won't be. These are the weaker ones. And we, when we say QLCS, it stands for Quasi Linear Convective System. Fancy word for squall line. So again, outflow boundary goes up here, outflow boundary goes down here. So that means nothing will happen, you know, for those storms north of that or these storms west of it, which means the only storms capable are the ones in between. Now, these storms here, if something were to happen, could kind of rotate along that boundary line on the north side of town. That'd be an area to watch. So let's do a track on this guy here. So we're moving, what, northeast at 48. 
So let's do this. So that's Woodland Park, 920, well it's now, these are all now, Woodland Park, Newcastle, Bethany, War Acres, then we got Oklahoma City in a couple minutes, Moore, Valley Brook, Norman, Forest Park, Dell City, Hall Park, Lake Lum, Midwest City, Spencer, Nakoma Park, Choctaw Jones, Harrow, all in the next 30 minutes. That's about how long it'll take for this storm system to work its way through the Oklahoma City Metro to get to the east side of town. So there's your storm track there, and within this, you can get these little spin-ups, and those will have to track, you know, city or street by street. Still, still got the couple of little weak circulation centers around the airport. Let's see on that radar, not all that impressive. Let's try, let's try this one here. This one actually looks a lot better, and this again is right over the airport, actually right over the ASOS reading temperature uh, site. Uh, it's now just now new update came in just moved east it's on the east side of the airport coming up on 44 the intersection of southwest 59th so again this is just a potential tornado it's not a guarantee it's not been cited uh, but Doppler radar does indicate that is a possibility that it could happen so this is why we're tracking it live for you So in this case, if you have my weather app, AT's Weather to Go, um, and you live in that path, you may have gotten a uh, warning uh, that says dangerous storm approaching. So I got one, for example, because I work down there at the airport, uh, and then I got a 6.5 on the BTI. So that means the Barron Tornado Index was on that medium category to watch very closely. If it was a 7 to eight, I'd be hitting the shelter. So it was right at that point. So that's how you want to kind of interpret that. When you get a medium number, you to pay very close attention. And so that was for the twisting storm uh, moving on in uh, to the airport region. So like, for example, so on my phone, that's my work address I have and there's a location. So I can get custom notifications for any, any place in the whole country I want. If it's my, you know, for you, you know, you've got kids in different places, different schools, different homes. You've got grandparents you want to keep track of all this stuff. Um, that's a good way to do that. AT's weather to go. It's free on Apple and Google Play. So power flash was reported at that intersection of uh, I-44 and just north of 240. So like I said, that's right around Southwest 44th Street. So that's if there's if there is a tornado that would be located. Uh, and the beam is looking at around 500 feet off the ground. So that's pretty low. Let's see here. The other one is coming up on the radar itself. So it's right, basically that circulation is right over the radar. And this is on 48th Avenue and West Franklin Road is where that location would be. Uh, we've got a, another one up here that would be on Western Avenue and Southwest 149th Street. Another little brief weak circulation moving to the east northeast. So again, if you live east northeast, don't be surprised if a little small tornado does happen. So if you're along I-35 and more, uh, do not be concerned of a large tornado. Do not. It is not that situation, but it can be a very small, what I call the baby tornadoes, or teeny tiny ones. EF0, those are very small. Uh, and if you're, as long as you're in any adequate shelter, it is not a, not a big deal at all. You're totally safe. Up here in uh, Bethany, that's the other location now, uh, coming up on US-62 and Meridian. So there's a possible developing tornado in that case. So those are all three QLCS type tornado locations along the leading edge of the squall line. And as far as the rest of the state is concerned, again, these are the only places to be concerned with, just those spots. So another more power flashes are being noted. Now, the other thing I need to tell you is that there's strong winds within this. Besides just these little areas of location, uh, anywhere you have blue here on the map, those are winds around 60 miles an hour or a little higher. So remember, it's, uh, 58 miles per hour is the threshold for a severe thunderstorm criteria wind. So with that in mind, you know you can easily see where you could get some decent wind coming out of that. Uh, 
and we'll take a look at some of that too. So let's see, 50, there's some 50s, 54, 55 on this radar. Let's see, that was, tried this one. These winds are a little bit weaker here on the storm relative. So for straight line winds, we'll stick with the uh, base velocity. So in this one, there's a little pocket of blue there, which is around 56. Here's some more little blue up around the mid to upper 50s. I think the winds are coming down a little bit in, in intensity here, just real quick in the last couple of scans. And the circulation centers are a lot weaker. It's still present though. All right. So this radar is still in the blue. We're now we're at 53 to 58. So there's 59. See, so yeah, in the last few minutes, they really come down uh, quite a bit in in uh, speed. So this is going to be basically a strong wind event. Uh, with very close to severe criteria winds, which is 58 miles per hour. And that's moving through the metro right now. The circulations that we're tracking have all pretty much vanished. I uh, really don't see any that are... Let's do this. that stand out very well. Let's see. So I see a pocket of strong winds at Indian Hills Road in East and Northwest 24th Avenue and that looks like it's about 60 plus, 64 miles per hour. So yeah, so the, uh, the Oklahoma City ASOS uh, from, uh, from the airport reported a, a wind gust of 57 knots. So again, that's in the low 60s for the wind speeds. All right, so for just now kind of tuning in and, and checking it out, we were tracking the, a section, a segment of the squall line moving through Oklahoma City and looking for little QLCS tornadoes along it. And there were about three hot beds, three hot spots that uh, at times looked like they may have tried to produce uh, nothing that was official and didn't get any reports. You know, there were some power flashes noted. That can just be from the strong winds. Uh, the best shot I actually saw of it whenever it was earlier over uh, Bridge Creek. That was the last time I saw one. Oh, and then one that was near Mustang. Other than that, the rest were very um, weaker in appearance. The best wind right now is where I just told you before, and it's moving into Bryant Avenue and Southeast 34th Street. So those are wind speeds in excess of 60 miles per hour at that location. Otherwise, the rest of the winds have died down quite a bit. Let's see what's going on here. This will be, it's, well, it's right now it's along uh, the west side of town, most of it. The bottom end of it's kind of moving through into the uh, Moore area. But the northern fringe is still kind of working through and into downtown Oklahoma City. It'll be crossed over at 35 totally here in just a couple of minutes. So the official wind gusts, let's see, for... Oklahoma City was 66 miles per hour. Okay. So that area of wind is now pressing up into 77 and 37. 
and that's still it's about 66 miles per hour so that is your your biggest track of wind speeds right now the outflow boundary from the other storms is kind of put the brakes on right about here so I'll watch these kind of storms here as they interact with the outflow boundary along this part otherwise uh, things are pretty benign currently as far as any tidal threat for the time being the way things have evolved we'll see if that uh, stays the same heavy rainfall is moving through but I haven't really had a lot of lightning with it so the intensity is probably diminishing Now, part of that reason here in the south, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. So this right here is the leading edge of the gust front. Well, this right here is the leading edge of the storms themselves. So what happens is the storms kind of got a little carried away, and they released all their winds. And so their winds are rushing out ahead of the storm. So what that means, you get a little minor straight line winds for a little bit till that momentum dies down but then the storm itself can no longer produce any type of traumatic activity. So now we're, our, our, our area for potential tornadoes is even smaller. is basically just across a very small area here by 35 and points east, uh, here over the eastern half of Oklahoma City. So that's really only concern uh, for a potential tornado. Okay. See this one again. Yeah, some of these winds are up around 60. This is just on the south end of Moore. Again, right up along 77. There's not really much of any other threat with this as far as uh, hail or anything. They're not that type of storms. So, unless something happens with this intersection of this gust front right here, uh, we really don't have much to worry about here in Oklahoma City anymore as far as a QLCS tornado. So we'll watch as it moves through. So again, my focus here for that thread is on the north side of town, pretty much right along 44 points north there, paralleling 44 as we head up the turnpike. So that little white, yellow, yellow line represents the zone. You can see how that little gust front put the brakes on where I got that yellow line. And I'm watching another, this guy right here come in. So between that and this, now our area is even smaller. So basically it's this intersection and then along this line. So we, we can cut out this western part as far as any tornado potential. That's how quickly things can change. And I just look for tornadoes here is what my main concern is. So as those come through, let's go check this other guy.
that northern gust front that came in has been is really diffuse and that's good to see it means um, the vorticity along it kind of just dissipated gradually and uh, so it's got a lot less to work with as far as trying to do anything the leftover residual area of concern there's one here it's right along 35 and the 40 split so that's coming up on the river also Bryant Road the North Canadian River stream so very weak little rotation area there and then there's one up here north of Forest Park uh, and that's going to be 44 and 35 coming up on that intersection and that's this little guy here but it's, it's very weak and very broad so those are the only two where I got anything at all to even pay attention to and if you see um, well, just So, of the two areas right now, this is the only one that's got somewhat of a couplet with it. And wind speeds on this, let's see, inbound of a whopping 10 miles per hour, outbound of 20, 21. It's 30, 30 miles per hour of shear with it. So like I said, it's not impressed. It would be a very weak tornado to be an EF0. Assuming that actually is able to do something and touch down. Let's see, that little area here on 44 and Northeast 50th, or excuse me, 35 and Northeast 50th. We'll see if that manages to do anything. So from another radar perspective, it's this guy and the guy up here. And like I said, either one of them is overly impressive. But it's the only thing really to, to look at. Okay. Scans keep coming in and updating, and this guy here over northern parts of Midwest City, it's falling apart, so it's gone. The only thing left now is this one up around Forest Park, and it's still same area, really hasn't moved. It's uh, 35, and like I said, just south of uh, Northeast 50th Street, just on the west side. This is a uh, little circulation center right here. And if that can't get its act together, then this is already over, and I'm going to set you loose. And I doubt it will, the way things have gone. They're best on the west side of town coming in than they ever did coming actually through the town. Rural Rogers was the last time we actually had any decent circulation with these. As they were going over the airport. So I know a lot of you guys were saying, hey, Aaron, are you going to give us an update? When are you going to come on? Remember, I only cover tornadoes. So if I'm not on, it's a good thing. <laughs> it is a good thing. I do try to cover all the tornadoes. Sometimes I can't. Um, like last night, the, the one that was uh, coming into Laverne, far northwest Oklahoma, I couldn't cover at the time. and just made a post, and, and those with my app um, had plenty of warning. Matter of fact, I had a... A lady that lives in Laverne, and she showed me the, her screenshots of her ET's Weather to Go app and how it warned her before the Weather Service did, and she was very thankful. And it, it basically had a high number that said, you know, hit the deck, and luckily it lifted right before it got into town. 
So those things do happen. Okay. I'm about to sign this off because whatever circulation I had there has become so broadened and so linear that uh, it's just not showing me anything. Okay. All right. Well, this case is just a dying line of storms. And that's moving through the I-35 corridor. There's more down, of course, in southwest Oklahoma. And there's more up in northeast. But these are, think of at this point, this is basically a, a big flood-making event. So, unfortunately, that's not going to improve anytime soon. Let's do this. Precipitation, storm total. So, for example, now this is just the radar over a 24 hour period, by the way. Uh, it's got five inches of rainfall, for example, here in Kingfisher, uh, around Dover, Dover, and up around Enid. It's got pockets here in purple, which should be up around two inches, an inch to two inches. This, the blue is when it gets out of control. Um, here's up here around two to three. Out here west near Hydros, two to three. But as far as radar estimations go, Kingfisher, man, that's, that's been the worst here in the short term. There's a five inch estimate on radar. So flooding, flash flooding, river flooding, lake flooding, creek flooding, flooding flooding is just the nature of the beast here for uh, this event and really this week. And we've got uh, more rain for tomorrow. Uh, let's see what time is it, 9.45? I can show you a real quick forecast picture of that, and then I'm going to sign off because there's I'm, I'm not seeing anything left here on the radar screen. That's doing anything of importance. So we'll do that. And then, um, like I said, because even the wind speeds have come down quite a bit. All right, so let me, let's do this. Let's see how tomorrow looks. And then we're going to let you enjoy the rest of your evening. So here are the storms moving through now. Those move on out. And then tomorrow it's got several storms hugging the northern counties of the state. This is coming in in the late afternoon and evening. So it's basically the evening hours up here in northern Oklahoma, up through midnight, northeast Oklahoma. So Rocklahoma has really gotten lucky. I mean, they're still having to deal with some storms, but the majority of them are after dark and late. So that moves out for Sunday, excuse me, Saturday. And then your Sunday, we've got a few storms out here in the Panhandle, but those fall apart as they move into western Oklahoma. So Sunday is looking pretty decent according to that model, which has done really well, by the way. Let's look at another one. Got the storms here tonight. You can see how they fall apart really quickly. And then those, uh, let's see what else we got after that. For tomorrow, we got some storms out in the Panhandle. Those move in the western parts of the state. That's a different look than the other, which had them in northern Oklahoma, if you notice. And that's drastic. That's a big change. Regardless, this has got storms. We're going to have them for your Saturday evening out here in the west. You can see how they fall apart as they move into central Oklahoma. So we're talking about flooding across western Oklahoma and then Oklahoma City in the far eastern fringe of really getting much of anything. And then sat, uh, what are we on Saturday, uh, Sunday? Sunday's looking pretty quiet. And that's it. And then there's Monday morning, which is pretty quiet. Uh, let's take a look at the sounding point sounding for this mess out here. Let's see what kind of atmosphere they have to work with. All right, so indications are some supercell structures with some decent wind shear. Uh, lapse rates aren't all crazy from the surface, but they're good at mid-levels. So we'll have a little bit of hail with them, probably about an inch in diameter. And shear is just decent enough for a weak tornado potential. 
Um, so there you go. So that's for tomorrow afternoon, uh, late at late afternoon, early evening out there in western Oklahoma with any of those storms that happen to form and then move across the border. So kind of like today. The, the, the threat isn't zero, but it's low. Um, so And the, the way things are going, you see the model produces a line versus just individual supercells. So you'd have to have an embedded supercell within that to do some, you know, real damage. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of like today. Uh, and the reason why it goes more of a line segment structure, let's take a look. Partially, maybe, because we've got weak winds here between uh, 3 to 6 kilometers. And they shrink a little bit above, and they're, they're pretty decent below. So that's probably one of the reasons. And there's a little bit of a cap there, too. But anyway, so like I said, looks like some, maybe some storms out there in western Oklahoma. So that would be the forecast. So you guys kind of stay abreast, and, and if they do happen, we're looking at some flooding. Let's do a quick total. I mean, there, there's some hot spots out here. Good grief, 10 inches of rain, 11. That's just dumb. You guys do not need that kind of rain. No one does. So if that happens yesterday, we get that slow-moving squall line that kind of doesn't really move much out here late in the evening for uh, western half of the state. That's what your threat is, mainly is more flooding rainfall. Okay, so there's your forecast in for first part of the weekend and or Saturday and Sunday. Let's see, looking at this real quick, see if there's anything's changed. Nope. Let's look at this one. Nope. Okay. Typical thunderstorm for Oklahoma. Alrighty, um, I'm gonna uh, sign off, and I do not expect to come back on because I think that was our best shot at seeing something, and that didn't even happen. And uh, we're gonna call it. So hey, thanks for joining me. Appreciate you guys following. You guys have been awesome. Uh, a ton of you have reached out, supported me either verbally, showing me your screenshots from ETS Weather to Go, or uh, joining my Facebook uh, fan subscriptions or Patreon, and that's awesome. So the links have been on all these videos you've been watching all scattered throughout my page and then once you get on there you can get access to our secret page where I give you bonus content uh, and it's a really cool weather community and I mean die hard they help each other out you know they, they post some funny memes and stuff to uplift you and then you know but there's a lot of good information shared on that page so if that interests you you want to join uh, if you're kind of uh, weather uh, aficionado or weather savvy or just you know weather oriented you'll definitely want to be there because uh, you're going you're gonna to learn a lot and have a lot more fun. And I'll interact with you a lot more on, on that group page. So just make sure you join that. But to get into joining, you have to be a, a member. So join the uh, Facebook uh, fan subscriptions for that. Um, that was it. Get my weather app if you want. AT is weather to go. It's free. And uh, pretty soon, as soon as, as soon as I get enough of you guys join the fan group and stuff, then I'm turning those ads off. So I know some of them on the iPhones especially, there's some full page ads you can't get out of. You can't close them. It won't let you exit. Google is a punk uh, when it comes to that. I've actually blocked those and they keep coming back and I talk talk to tech support and